Elon Musk tried everything to get out of his $44 billion bed, but in the end, he acquired Twitter. Some online communities celebrate Elon Musk and Twitter's recommitment ceremony for an unpleasant reason. Not because Musk will improve Twitter's user experience. However, some people think he'll use his brand new $44 billion toy as a weapon against his political foes. Welcome back to another exciting video from Informative Scoop. Today's video is about Elon Musk. I bought Twitter to destroy social media. Before we start the video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Musk, on the other hand, said he bought Twitter to benefit humanity. It is challenging to determine Elon Musk's true motivations for purchasing Twitter while still knowing him. Was it his purpose to ruin social media, or was it really to aid humanity? Time alone will. The world's richest man is said to have bought this social networking behemoth for $54.20 a share, which is higher than the inflated price he proposed in April before leading the firm on a journey whose destination wasn't clear until a few days ago. Anyone could be excused for having doubts that the matter has reached a crisis point, given Musk's tendency to change his mind. According to the Washington Post, Musk completed the transaction. It fired the company's CEO, Parag Agrawal, along with several other top employees, as he took control of the organization. The eight-month-long tale involving Elon Musk and the firm he tried to purchase but didn't, didn't again, might have bought but ultimately did seems to have ended. You simply never know. Musk and Twitter were slated to fight in the Delaware Court of Chancery earlier in October, with Twitter reportedly holding the advantage. There will no longer be a trial. No sworn testimony that he cannot lie in will be required of Musk, and no one will be allowed to read his text. He will be in charge of a $44 billion purchase that will be financed primarily with his own money, $13 billion in bank loans that he will have to pay back with a serious interest, and an indefinite amount from equity investors. He was alluring. For months, Musk and Twitter were dogged by worries about his attempts to break the deal and his capacity to devise a solution. He tried several lame justifications, beginning with bots, moving on to a whistleblower, and concluding with perhaps his lenders. It turned out that not even the wealthiest man with the most expensive lawyers could get out of a legally binding contract that had been crafted by equally expensive lawyers, specifically with the fear that their customer would not be. The world can finally focus on new Musk Twitter questions like his genuine ambitions for the firm and what he plans to accomplish with it now that Musk has joined Twitter. When Musk first flirted with the idea and eventually reached a deal to buy Twitter, what he wanted with it seemed very clear. He aimed to create a free speech utopia on Twitter. He desired to turn Twitter's left wing around, which made him more appealing to the politically engaged right online. In a tweet regarding content moderation, he claimed that going beyond the law goes against what the public wants. Some claim he had the voice of someone who wants to turn Twitter into a hangout for neo-Nazi and far-right trolls. Because Twitter is pricey and a market collapse required him to pay tens of billions of dollars, more than the asking price, Musk consciously avoided buying the company. He might also have realized what a headache it would be to run a platform with hundreds of millions of demanding, opinionated, and occasionally extremely powerful users. But he was almost certainly going to have to put up with it, and in recent weeks, he showed signs of acknowledging that his mid-October statement that he was overpaying today but believed the long-term potential was much higher than its current value was accurate. He started to speak more as a man focused on running Twitter as a company. He asserted that Twitter was a pawn in creating an app for everything. He admitted to the world that Twitter could not transform into a free-for-all hellscape in an open letter to sponsors. He is reportedly assuring his bankers that he will help them market the deal to debt investors. Musk has always acknowledged the economic potential of his initiatives but it now heavily affects his remarks and behavior about them. Musk is continuously thinking and starting with his evasion or blatant deception on whether he wanted to be an active or passive shareholder in March. Regarding every element of this transaction, he has altered his mind. The big question about what will happen to the app that is simultaneously the least liked and the app that is used by the most people, Twitter, is the one that comes closest to providing an answer to all the smaller ones because no one else is aware of the balance between his capitalist and libertarian sides as he decides how to proceed with the future of Twitter. Is Musk a free speech champion? Who online creates a level playing field for conservatives? Or is he a business tycoon rescuing a failed asset? 
I believe we know the correct response based on his most recent tweets following the completion of the transaction. The bird is free, he wrote in his first tweet after making the purchase. In response to criticism, he wrote, anyone suspended for trivial or questionable reasons will be released from Twitter jail. And that has already materialized, as evidenced by Donald Trump's recent return to activity, as he tweeted. I'm grateful to Elon Musk. It's lovely to be back. I hope all the losers and haters have forgotten about me. Elon Musk developed a fixation with the free speech earlier this year, just after Twitter banned Donald Trump for using the platform to try to destroy the American government. He tweeted about it once more on January 11, 2021. Before that, he had only mentioned it earlier. He posted a tweet on May 9. Political analysis should be used to understand the attacks against me. This is their typical nasty strategy, but I won't stop fighting for a bright future and your freedom to free expression in the face of opposition. These elements might make it challenging for Twitter and other companies that support unrestrained free expression. Jack Dorsey, the creator and former CEO of Twitter, was forced to observe and occasionally manage the organization's collapse from the free speech wing of the free speech party to what it is now. Before Musk announced his takeover, the issue was a major cause of annoyance. Twitter should be revamped, according to Dorsey. Musk's support of free speech made him a hero on the internet. You're right. This support group may appeal to someone with a history of seeking to position himself as the primary character. If Musk were to unwind, this group might jubilate and cheer him. Twitter's Rules for Moderation One of the executives who had to resign was the head of Twitter's legal policy, Trust and Safety, a division that covers content moderation, for example, by allowing hate speech as long as it doesn't promote violence as free speech demands. Given his apparent preference for as little moderation as possible, it is safe to presume that he is somewhat unaware of the subtleties of content moderation. He'll probably modify a few things, but it's unlikely they'll improve the user experience. It might even be a successful tactic for the majority of individuals. Many people have had substantial financial success by effectively marketing their businesses. Musk may find enough repressed conservative souls in the world to generate a sizable amount of revenue for Twitter if he permitted Neo to seize control of Twitter. However, it's not a wise bet. Since the firm has recently taken a more aggressive stance, it is more probable that it will drive away users who prefer Twitter to other platforms because it tolerates less abuse and racism. Twitter would also lose the advertising money that supports its operations. Conservatives lane on social media for truth-telling is already rather full, and those looking to monetize it don't seem to be doing too well either. If it had made financial sense to move in that path, Twitter would have given it more significant consideration since it is a publicly traded corporation. Most people do not share the maximal belief that anyone should be free to speak with anyone, anywhere, at any time. Musk could, of course, keep going in that direction. He has the resources to turn Twitter into a secure space for his favored political discourse. He was watching its company fail while continuing to live its life. But even for a man with a net worth of nearly $200 billion, that seems like a reach. $44 billion is a significant amount. There are several tiers of the wealthy, and it makes sense to infer that Musk enjoys being at the top. He might be fired from that position, at the absolute least. He most likely wants to stay away if Twitter's operations are badly botched. That's all for today. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting content.